This is the Engines of Our Ingenuity, made possible by the friends of KUHF Houston. Today, we look for gold and we find history. The University of Houston's College of Engineering presents this series about the machines that make our civilization run and the people whose ingenuity created them. There was no moon on the night of June 23, 1944. The huge 360-foot Japanese submarine I-52 was running in the Atlantic west of Dakar, Africa. It had been a long haul from Japan to Singapore, across the Indian Ocean, around Africa's Cape of Good Hope. Now it was headed north toward German-occupied France. You see, Japan had raw materials, Germany had technical know-how. In the late days of World War II, the I-52 was loaded with 300 tons of the tin, molybdenum, tungsten, and rubber that Germany desperately needed. The Japanese had come to buy German technology, and they also carried more than two tons of gold to sweeten the deal. They ran underwater on batteries by day and on the surface recharging batteries by night. They didn't know the Allies had broken their codes, that the American Navy was after them. That night in 1944, the pilot of a lone carrier-based plane found the I-52 on its radar, dropped flares, and saw the sub trying to dive to safety. He caught it squarely with his one torpedo. Ninety-five sailors, 14 Mitsubishi engineers, and all that gold went down in 17,000 feet of water, over three miles down. The American carrier and a lurking German submarine both noted the position, and that was that. There the I-52 sat far out of reach and practically out of memory for 50 years. But 4,400 pounds of gold is not so easy to forget. Finally, ocean explorer Paul Tidwell built a leading-edge team of Russian and American oceanographers. They went after the submarine with remote cameras. It wasn't easy. The New York Times tells how on May 5, 1995, with the search vessel running low on fuel, Tidwell's team found the submarine miles from the Navy's estimated location. It lay almost a mile deeper than the wreck of the Titanic. Unlike the broken and badly rusted Titanic, the I-52 was in good condition. And now, at this writing, reclamation work begins. And Tidwell, once an American soldier wounded in action, says, We want to disturb the wreck as little as possible. I feel a responsibility to make sure we treat it with respect. Those people were doing their jobs and died bravely. Jesse Taylor, the pilot who torpedoed the I-52, is stunned. I had no idea this thing could be located, he says. Meanwhile, Japan has been cooperating, and the team promises to return what personal belongings it can to families of the dead. The gold should pay for the adventure, but drama of another kind emerges from the deep. They've found the largest Japanese submarine remarkably intact. It's a game, of course, an adventure, but the game has honed new technologies of exploration and it's handed us the privilege of looking history in the face. I'm John Leanhard at the University of Houston, where we're interested in the way inventive minds work.